Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe, no title, and I'm so glad that you joined me for the Lord's Word of God today. And we just celebrate Yeshua, Jesus, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and there is no other master of the universe. Amen? Amen. And so if you brought your Bibles today, please turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And we're going to read from verse 21. Jesus tells us, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, then we prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So the second passage we'll read is in the same book, the book of Matthew, chapter 23. We'll start reading in verse 25. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup of this dish, but the inside there are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees, first cleanse the inside of the cup and the dish, that the outside of them may be cleansed also. So you see, brothers and sisters, God judges the heart. It shows if you're good or bad. Sisters, there's two kinds of preachers out there. The ones for money and the ones that are there to save. See, brothers and sisters, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the hole. That's what the Word of God says. And so there's wolves out there, and people need to be aware of this. Paul warns of this in Acts chapter 20. He says, I know at my departure, savage wolves will come in and not spare the flock. He says, for three years, I did not cease in warning the people day and night with tears. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 3 it reads, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. And in 1 John chapter 4, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit, whether it is good or bad. You need to ask the Lord for discernment. Jesus tells us in chapter 5 of Matthew, Do not think I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one title will by no means pass till all is fulfilled. And in Romans chapter 6, the Word of God tells us, What shall we say? Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. That's what the Word of God says, and it's the truth. It does not lie. Amen? Amen. You see, brothers and sisters, the false teachers are trying to teach people that they can do whatever they want and still make it to heaven. But that's wrong. If you do not do Jesus' commandments, you are lost. People that do what they want to do will not be saved. Never think you're so close to God that you can do whatever you want because you can't. So brothers and sisters, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul describes our walk with Jesus as running a race. And he says, running away to obtain the prize. So we must remember to run the race in a way to win. You're not winning a perishable crown, but an incorruptible crown. Amen? Amen. And that's what the Word of God says. And it is the truth. It cannot lie. Amen? Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we're all a work in progress. And Paul says in Philippians 3, Brethren, I do not count myself as to have apprehended. One thing I do is forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward for those things that are ahead. I press towards the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So put those sins behind you. And keep climbing that ladder to the paradise of heaven. Amen? Amen. God is long-suffering. He's not like our earthly fathers who punish us soon. But at some point, he will chasten us to make us better. And God would never chasten people if he did not want us to follow Jesus in obedience. For we know in Hebrews 12, 6, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. 
I'm reading 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous are scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? Amen? Amen. The wolves out there are a cunning pack of wolves, conning people into sin. And I'll end with 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, without spot and blemish. As also in all the epistles, speaking of them, of these things, in which are some of these things hard to understand, which untaught, unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, let us continue carrying the cross given to us by taking Christ as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe his doctrine and obey him, and we will all be with our Lord and Savior someday for eternity. Amen? Amen.